It's Positively Muskegon, Andy O'Reilly with my dear friend Eddie Sanders Jr. who is behind a big event coming to Rowan Park in Muskegon Heights. It's coming up this Saturday. It's going to be a big deal. Thanks, Eddie, for taking a couple of minutes to come in and uh, say hi and talk about this 2,000-man march. Well, thanks, Andy, my friend, for having me. It's good to Appreciate see you. It. Let me tell you how I first met Eddie. Eddie was a, is a singer. He's an incredible singer. He's got this disc out called They Counted Us Out, in case you haven't got that yet. Find a link for it here on Positively Muskegon. But uh, you do the national anthem, you do church stuff. You, I mean, you're all over, man. Man, you gotta make me blush, man. <laughs> <laughs> you turn a nice shade of red. I can see it right there. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, I am able to get around from time to time and use my voice. Yeah, you got a great voice, man. Did Did you start off as a kid as a singer, or did it something you just picked up as time went by? Well, actually, my father's a singer. Is he? And he's loud with it and very confident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And he used to sing in church, so I used to emulate him all of the time. Sure. But I actually, I really didn't start taking it seriously until a few years ago. Yeah? Yeah. And, uh, and Boy, how do like have you? I like it. I'm still learning. You're doing good, man. I love it. I love having you out because it's, you know, because I do a lot of these events, where the, especially where the National Anthem is sung. And when you come out, nobody knows what to expect, and you just waylay them. It's like everybody walks away and go, wow, listen to that voice. It's great. Well, <laughs> well we always want a second date. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we want a second date, so we just leave it on the floor. Yeah. When, when, when you're not singing, you, you do a lot of work for, for kids. You do a lot of work for the community. Yes. And a part of me feels like there's a little of me inside you because you want things better, and you want things... Um, I, I don't know. You just you just want everybody to get along a little bit better. Is that is that the case? That's my that's my nature. Yeah. I am the ninth of ten children. Are you really? Twelve children. Wow. I miss two. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of bickering and beef. You know, from time to time. <laughs> and for some reason, I was always the one to try to keep the family together. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just something that I inherited, I guess. And it transcended over to society and sure. my friends. You know, I was always the peacemaker. Yeah. You know, I didn't like friends uh, beefing and fighting. And and um, and I, I fight for the underdog. Yeah. Yeah, you I know, know the feeling, man. Yeah, I really I do. I fight for the underdog, and I want to always help and encourage and uplift. And you do a great job of it. I mean, are, you're, you're with Men With Color Read. Yes. You do that. Talk a little bit about that program. Well, Men With Color Read has been established for one year. John Covington, uh, uh, he started it. Yep. And it's been a year, it's been a great year. We go to Edgewood School, elementary school in Muskegon Heights uh, once a month and read to our uh, small babies trying to plant a seed that they may learn to read and love to read. Yeah. You know, because reading is knowledge and knowledge is power and power opens doors. Yeah. We just talked to the library the other day. And they say by four, you want to have these kids able to read and at least interested in reading because from there, that's where, where it all takes off. Yes. So it's important. But you guys show them a good example. We give them a good example of not only reading, but the way we appear. We yeah. appear and we're speaking articulately yep. and we're well dressed. Yep. You know, it's kind of contrary to what they're. Well dressed. <laughs> I've never seen you look bad, man. You, this guy's got more on clothes. <laughs> but we, you, I mean, you got a good image. Yeah, we, yeah. Want, we want to give the children a, a great image because yep. um, a lot of the things that they're attaching themselves to now with the bags sagging pants yep, and yep. and that whole thing you know uh it's not where it is man no so we want to catch them young yep and at least give them an opportunity of choice i don't have to dress like that we can dress like the men of color read yeah, yeah. look sharp yeah look good talk a little bit about young brothers that's something else you're involved in if yes. i'm not mistaken okay yes. what's young brothers about young brothers was also established by john covington and bernard Loudermill. okay and these are um, 12 to 18 year old uh, young men and we meet with them once a month as well at different sites around the city and we just sit down in a form and let them express themselves because a lot of times uh, children are talked at yeah. and they're talked to but they never get an opportunity to express themselves mm -hmm. express their hurts and express uh, what what makes them tick yeah what 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 life is like for somebody 12 to 18 years old what they're going through a lot of them um, are fatherless. Yep. They don't have leaders and mentors. And and it it takes them to a place where they're looking into the streets. Yep. To emulate what they see because yep. someone is going to raise our kids. Yeah. Whether it be a good person or, or a bad person. Mm -hmm. So we want to be that person, that surrogate father and uncle to step in 
and let them know, give them the good side of life. Good. You know, and, and we meet and we eat, you know, and uh, we just have a great time. We had, we did a lock-in at um, the YMCA or Muskegon Community College. I remember Center. the pictures, yeah. Yeah, and it was over 100 kids, and, and we played basketball with them and let them do whatever they wanted to do, but then it was a time to get serious yep. because we want to know what's in your hearts. Yeah. You know, give them a chance to express themselves. So they, that thing doesn't just fet what's hurting them and bothering them doesn't just fester in their hearts and and becomes a monster. Yeah, and yeah, then, oh yeah. Yeah, then it, then they react negatively and do something that they will regret. Hey, and you, you know, know what? That, that that's any kid. Yeah. I mean, you get older and you look back on on the way you were raised. You know, I don't care what color you are. It cost me a couple of years of therapy to get myself turned into the right direction. You know, I mm -hmm. had the alcohol problem. I had all kinds of problems with relationships and all that, you, you get lost. And if you don't have that that group or those people looking out for you, it can happen to anybody. Yes. And even if we, what we teach them and share with them, even if they do make a mistake, they can come to us to try to lead them in the right direction yep. because our children are going to make, they're going to make mistakes. Yep. But it's not the end of the world. Nope. You know, we We've live in a society of, of, of second chances yep. and forgiveness. Yep. But if you don't have that person to say, okay, man, get up, dust yourself off, and this is where we go from here. Yeah. You know. I love it. I love the message. I really yeah. do. This is your first really big event. Yes. Isn't it? Let's talk about the 2,000-man march. Why 2,000 men? Right there. Actually, on la I had nothing to do with it, actually. Really? Last, last fall, okay. I was going into Rowan Park every Friday and Saturday night because, like I say, I fight for the underdog. Yep. I too uh, dealt with alcoholism and addiction for 30 years, and and I I said we're going to start this ministry Friday and Saturday night. It's going to be called a weekend with Eddie in the park. Okay. So it's at Rowan Park, which is in between Columbia Courts mm -hmm. and a liquor store. So you get a lot of traffic, and some nights, you know, I I would speak like it's a thousand people out there, but it's only four people come through, and three of them are sloppy drunk. Right. And and and. Those people would come and they wanted to talk and they wanted to express their hurts. And we were there to be a listening ear or, or shoulder to cry on. Yep. You know, try to be an encourager, try to be a person to lift up a bowed down head. And it was very effective. And one Friday, I was riding my bike meditating on what I would speak on that Friday night and I received a phone notification. And I checked it, and they, someone told me that it was another murder in the city. Mm. So I was in that proximity. So I rode my bike around there, and I saw the young African American male deceased, face down in the dirt. You know, and it hurt my heart. It broke my heart. It should break anybody's heart. And I just said Your within kids. myself, I have to go deeper. Yeah. I have to go deeper. So that Friday night, as I was speaking on that stage to eight people, I saw in my mind's eye two thousand people with clarity. And um, it was so heavy upon me. That burden was so heavy. I knew that it was real. It was a vision. Yep. So I took it to uh, then Chief Muskegon Heights Chief Lynn Gill. Yep. And I shared it with him. And I said, Chief, I have a vision. He said, What is it? I said, A two thousand man unity march. And he sat back and he said, Two thousand. He said, That's a big number. Yes, it is. I said, It's doable. Yes, it is. So he retired, and I was watching television. Uh, the incident that happened, the shooting incident that happened at the Muskegon Heights High School. After the game. After the game. Yeah, yeah. And I saw Dr. Joseph Thomas, the interim chief now, and I saw him speaking with strength and wisdom and courage. And I said, that's my guy. That's the guy. That's and, and, you know, I'm going to throw it in there, too. I think everybody was impressed because mm -hmm. it was a no BS approach. Right. And that's good news. Yes, yes. That's good. So I approached him the same way as I did Chief Gill. Yep. And I told him about the vision, and maybe one sentence in, he said, I've heard enough. Let's do it. Do Let's it. get it done. Do it. So I took it to uh, Honorable Mayor Kimberly Sims, and yep. she joined on board. And here we are. Here we are. Here we are. It's a week away. A week away. Have there been people helping you get this thing along? Is it, you got a couple of sponsors behind this, or is it just you? Actually, it's majority me, but we have a sponsor in Web Chemical. Okay. The Community Foundation. Um, but Porsche Kid. Portia Kid has really rallied behind this, and she's uh, she's gotten together maybe eighty to a hundred women. Yep. Just what can I do to help anybody? And Pitch I'm in. getting random inboxes on Facebook, phone calls, 
what can I do? I want to be a part because our people are hurting. Yeah. And our people want to do something, but they didn't know what to do besides talk to each other in the barbershop, yep. in the beauty shop, yep. or a preacher preaching across a pulpit. Well, we need to get out here and do something and be visible and be a powerful, positive image of what a group of determined people can do on a united front. Let's get out here and unite. Let's get out here and close the social divide. Let's get out here and network. Let's put this great idea with someone who has finances to make it a reality. Yeah. You know, let's come together. Let's let's walk in unity. Let's dwell together in unity. I'm in. Uh, dude, you're you're singing my song and I love hearing it. I mean, to me, I mean, do, let me ask you this, man to man. Yes, sir. Do we get along in Muskegon as good as we should? No. Racist? No, I, no, 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 we don't. Uh, but I believe it's because we need an initiative. We need someone to stand up and address these things. Some people speak to everyone they know. Yep. You know, regardless of race, creed, or color. But some are afraid they want to. Yeah. You know, a lot of people operate in fear. But there needs to be a template. You know, someone to step up and say, it's okay to say hello. Look, yes. look the person that's passing you in the eye and say, have a great day. How are you doing today? These are the things you that know. bother me the most. It's yeah. the little things. Yeah. You know? I mean, you and I can get on camera and talk and make speeches and talk to groups and all that other stuff. But it, if you just get down to the fact that we're just neighbors, man. That's it. That's all there is to it. We're just neighbors. All we got to do is connect that. That's it. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get over the concrete divide. Yep. You know, and we're trying to get over the railroad tracks that divide us. Yep. You know, and just be a village. Be a community. To commune as one. Yeah. You know, and we could get so much further if we do the simple things. Simple things. The simple things. And, and I'm thankful that the 2000 Man Unity March will be a bridge. If you choose to cross the bridge, I'm we're crossing. gonna make it available for you. I'm crossing. You. <laughs> you bet. You even got me coming to say a couple of words. Yes, yes man. Yes, yes, yes. You've earned it. Yeah. You've earned Thank it. Thank you. And we have. Speaking of that, I have maybe 15 speakers, but wow. three to five minutes because yep. so many people have paved the way. Yep. So many people are getting getting their hands dirty, throwing their hat into the ring, yep. and they deserve it. They've been in. Uh, in the community for 30, 40, 50 years, yep. doing well. Doing well. You know, and, and pouring out their heart into the community. They deserve three minutes. Absolutely. You know, instead of having two people speak 40 minutes apiece. You know, let's break this down and let's be community. And that's what it's about. That's it. Let's get the councilmen from Northern Shores to speak. Yeah. Let's get the mayor of Northern Shores to speak. Let's get the mayor. You got Neyland coming? I got Gary Neyland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to outdo him. I promise you that. <laughs> yes, actually, he confirmed on last week. Awesome. Because this is diversity. Yeah. You know, this is what this is. That's what we are. You know, it, this is, we're blind to color. We're blind to walls. And all of those things that keep us separated, they're coming down on Saturday, June 11th. What time does it get underway? It starts, the march starts at 11. Uh, registration starts at eight o'clock. You okay. can get there early and, and meet some people. Bring your business cards. Yep. Meet some people and socialize and get reacquainted and drink some coffee, drink some water. And it will be a 2.2. Actually, I'm I'm gonna be. You're hearing it here first. It's a three mile mar uh, march. Okay. But actually, the car that I originally did it in said three miles. <laughs> The Tire one I size. did it last week said 2.2 .2 miles. <laughs> so maybe that would attract more people because yep. they're not going to have to do the whole three. But we're going to do a three mile, I mean, 2.2 .2 mile march of Broadway to uh, Broadway and Hume. Okay. And we're going to take Hume uh, east to German. Okay. German north one block to Hovey and Hovey west uh, back to Baker Street and Baker Street back to the park and that's when the festivities begin there's going to be singing a live band there's going to be uh, spoken word poetry there will be speeches by uh, yours truly andy o <laughs> and amongst many others and it's just going to be a great time a great family time there'll be a bounce house for the kids and there's going to be a clown let me tell you about the clown i um i wanted a clown i just saw a clown in yep. my, you know i said where would i find a clown so I was just talking to someone. They say, I know a clown. Named Gary Neeland. Uh, Gary Neeland's a clown? No. Oh. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> but uh, he said, Jim Tannis from Montague. Yeah. And I had just spoke at uh, a men's breakfast there. So I called him and I said, Jim, I need a clown. 
He said, Eddie's, I have been retired for two years. Yep. I haven't put my uniform on, outfit on for two years. But he said, I'm coming out of retirement for this one. Nice. So that was really encouraging. So we're going to have face painting for the kids, free food, hot dogs, chips, and water. Going to have uh, 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 barbecue dinners for sale if you choose to go that route. G-Man cooking them? Who? G-Man? No, I don't know G-Man. You don't know Greg Roberts? No, not Greg Roberts. Okay. It's going to be uh, Idris. Uh, Jenkins, we're gonna have Kevin Smith, and a guy named Eric Jewell. Yum. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, so we're uh, we're just gonna have a great time. It won't, we won't be there all day. Yep. But we just want to be there to plant a seed, and we and we're just hoping that a lot of things be birthed out of this. It's not just a march, and then we forget about it in two nope. weeks. It's not just a get together, and we nope. forget about it in three weeks. But we want seeds planted. We want relationships uh, created. You know. Uh, and, and just bond, just bond. Let's bond, Muskegon County. You got it. Yeah. Dude, you're a rock star in my world. I can't, <laughs> I can't honestly think of a guy I think higher of in Muskegon for all you do and all you organize and everything you stand for. You're the man, Eddie Sanders. What I'm just trying to do my part. You're doing it. Thank you, sir. It'll be Rowan Park this coming Saturday. Make sure you're out there. All the details are right here on Positively Muskegon. You're going to see more of this guy in the future. When are you, when you going to run for mayor? Uh, not anytime soon. No? Not anytime Come on, soon. man. You, me, and Neyland. We could run this whole town. Uh, well, <laughs> inbox me. <laughs> Positively, Muskegon. It's the 2000 Man March coming up at Rowan Park this Saturday. Make sure you're there.